And why do we worry? Because we care. We worry because we are horrible. No, I'm just kidding. No. We worry because we, <laughs> we worry yeah. because we care. We the care. The reason why you're so worried and the reason why you have so much anxiety is because you really want your life to be the freaking best, which is beautiful. You care so much about your well-being. You care so much about your future. You care so much about safety and your family's safety that you are literally losing sleep over it. See, but, but, exactly. Your positive but this intention is where... behind that, it needs some positive recognition of like you are a beautiful person for caring and the caring and the way that you're caring is outdated and no longer serving you because every coping right. mechanism has its expiration date. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We are here. It's your co-hosts, Lindsay Robinson, hypnotherapist extraordinaire, and myself, Kelsey Aida, transformation facilitator and author. And we are here to, you know, as always, entertain, help you live your best life, give some advice, and just be real and talk about life. So, Today, we are doing a solo episode, which we've been doing quite a few recently, just because we've been having some scheduling situations with some of our guests. But as much as I love our guests, like, I'm not mad about it. I love Listen, hanging out with my girl. <laughs> we love the guests. We love the guests. But I do agree the where, like, the di directions that our conversations go when it's just us, like, oh, it's just magical. Yeah. I feel, so... I feel like uh, this is meant to be. <laughs> Yeah, this, this episode. It always is. So today we're going to create is. some more magic and we thought it would be nice to touch on the subject of struggling to stay present, which is kind of a reoccurring theme on the show because Lindsay and I tend to be on the anxious spectrum and we know a lot of our listeners are too and anxiety is just something a lot of us struggle with in this day and age. So let's talk about it. Let's get real about it. Let's share about it and make it less of a bad thing and something that we can relate to better and just something for us to navigate together as a community. Yeah. So you know that I, you're not alone. I will say that no matter what I'm going through um, personally or, you know, whatever Kelsey's going through. For some reason, this show is such an amazing catalyst for me, at least, to uh, connect, right? Connect with the things I need to connect with, universe and guides and all those things. So that the things I say, if I'm having, if I'm like going through an SHIT show <laughs> and we do a show about it, right? I know I'm going to end up saying the exact thing that I need to hear and hopefully something that everybody else needs to hear. It just puts me in the state I need to be in, if that makes sense. So I think it's always important for us to speak on very uh, timely topics that we're going through because it does tend to have that therapeutic effect. And as far as the staying present and, and enjoying the moment you're in theme, I see this all the time with clients. And it's, a, it's one of my favorite things to help them with because it's so easy when you're on the other side of the desk and the other side of the Zoom screen. So uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a very, very common thing and I'm really excited to, to dive into it. Also, before we start, I just have to say that I love these conversations because before we had a show, we used to have conversations like this as friends on FaceTime, ugly crying to each other. Usually it was me crying, not Lindsay. Just I don't think I've context. ever cried. I mean, I might have <laughs> cried once with you. But it's usually you know, just like venting to each other. And I feel like yeah. now we get to do it in this like world stage constructive platform of like coaching each other through each other's problems essentially and like navigating the challenges together like on air. And I think it's pretty you know, unique and cool. We've just added a few more people to our circle. That's all that's happened. And <laughs> you guys are basically sitting in on some of our most profound conversations we've ever had with each other <laughs> right here well, live not on the show. Well, just a few because I was checking the stats and we're almost at 300,000 lifetime downloads. So can we just have a moment of Yay. silence for how many downloads this show has had? That is epic. Thank you, guys. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. You guys are awesome. So thanks, everyone, who's been sharing the show, vibing with the show, you know, telling their friends to go listen, listening to all the episodes. It's really cool that we've been able to 
be in your earbuds that many times. And one more thing before we get started. I know, I know, guys, you're just like, get on with it. We know, we know, okay, just go. Uh, One more thing. We have 90 reviews on our show on Apple Podcasts. If we can get 10 of you, we've been sitting at 90 for months, at least a couple months. If we can get 10 of you, just 10, we will hit over the 100 review hump. And so far, we have a five-star podcast. So let me clarify. For those 10 people that want to give us a (laughs) five-star review, please head over to Apple Podcasts, search for us, and you can do it right from your phone. It takes two seconds and it has such a huge impact impact on how we grow the show, who listens to the show, who finds the show. If you need it, other people need it too. So please review us. We appreciate you so much. Okay, now we can go. Great call to action. <laughs> so the topic of the day, struggling to stay present. Tell us, tell us your scenario, Lindsay. Give, give us some venting. Well, give us the goods to work with. You know, my biggest hurdle okay so if you guys remember are these shows being aired in order that we record them they are right yeah for the most part so the last show we recorded was about all about ancestral tarot and we did a little bit about how to get into it and the basics of it and so much fun ancestral healing things like that we did a little spread and this morning that that was just a couple days ago. So all the stuff from that episode was still on my desk. And I walk in today and I do some more. I'm like, this is so fun. I love this so much. And I, there's a, there's a practice in the book about meeting your family spirit guide. So like your ancestral spirit guide, I guess. And this dude was just talking all of (laughs) in the cards was just like, Hey, don't be miserly, chill out, relax, enjoy the journey. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. I don't know what I expected to hear, but for some reason that struck such a, like a not fun chord with me. And it's such a theme in my life. Whenever I have the lowest points mood and mindset wise and motivation wise, it is always because I'm being impatient. Always. I can always trace it back to this isn't happening fast enough. So the message I got was, hey, chill. I'm just like, oh, and then you were like, hey, fuck you. (laughs) No, it's just like, okay, really? And and listen, at the end of the day, at the bottom of the at the you know, bottom line is I really do appreciate all the messages that come through from my guides, my ancestors, my angels. Thank you for every bit of wisdom. Cause it's the stuff that I know I need to hear that I get the most mad about. And I don't know if anyone else is like that, but like if I pull a card that I know is hitting me hard. I just want to pull another one. Like, give me rainbows and butterflies, please. Next piece of advice. Thank you. (laughs) And sometimes you just don't get it. And it's because it's it's not what you need. You need a kick in the pants sometimes. And my kick in the pants is to chill and allow and trust and see the beauty of the moment for what it is. And truly, the beauty of my moment is that I, if I let it, I've been given the opportunity to be at peace there will be moments in my life where I won't be at peace and I won't have the opportunity to rest or relax as much as I'd like we all have those moments this is not one of those moments and yet I'm treating it like it is a moment where I must be doing more I must not be doing enough I must not be doing it right I must burn out my brain and figure it out and and it's really hard to not do that (laughs) to just wash my hands of it and go do something frivolous and just be at peace and welcome in the peace. It's very, very hard for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that's what's going on with me. When you've been practicing the opposite for so long, it's, it's not going to be like an easy flip of the switch, you know, usually yeah. I find, which, you know, is why like we, when we do work with people, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm going to help you in one session. It's like, okay, we need to work for a couple months together to like make some progress and make some changes. But I think it would be maybe beneficial to dive into like both sides of the coin here. So tell us more about like the thoughts that cause you to go out of the present. Like when you're future pacing and Mm -hmm. when you're having anxiety and when you're projecting into the future, like what does that sound like in your mind? It sounds like I need to work harder. I need to do gosh, I don't even have an answer. Like, I don't even know what I should be doing. I just know I should be doing something or else the world as I know it will fall out from under my feet is what it feels like. Like this impending doom just off the horizon. 
<laughs> this sounds horrible. <laughs> it really doesn't. It's not that bad. Well, this it, is how I it really feels am cre- to you. Yeah, Maybe this I really is am not creating your actual it. reality, but this is how it's feeling inside. Yeah. So it's good that you're sharing it. Like this it feeling of like I'm yeah. looking to I'm looking on a mountaintop to Mordor, Mount Doom, right? And I see this Lord of the Rings reference, and I see like just the the destruction and disaster in the future, like just ahead. If I don't, I don't know. If I don't what? Work myself yeah. to death? <laughs> What's so the, the part answer? of you that's worried is basically of the story that if I don't work super hard or overwork or overachieve, that everything is going to be doomed. Yep. Doomed. That's now heavy. can we talk about the reality? Is that yes, but not yet. Because I want, well, I want to make sure Leave we fully it to understand the, yeah. the challenge here, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's how your anxiety is feeling. That's pretty heavy. And obviously, that's not how all of you feels, the totality of your being. I'm sure there's a more relaxed part of you that has other feelings about the present and the future. And we'll get to her in a second. Absolutely. But the part of you that's nervous, is there any thought or um saying that is acceptable to her that does actually help her relax or feel like everything wouldn't go to shit yeah yes if I can remember it (laughs) I don't (laughs) I don't always I don't always but it is just there will always be more of everything Mm -hmm. and there's another one that my husband and I practice a lot is we are always taken care of Mm -hmm. because truly we have always been taken care of. We are Mm -hmm. always supported and that does help a lot. Um, I just, I keep going back to the action piece and I know that that's the one piece I don't need to be doing. I'm doing it. I know I am. I'm doing everything. But for me, it's like the mindset. And I was just talking to Abel about this before we got on the call. It's the mindset. My mindset is, if I could, if I could just feel good more of the time, then, or not even feel good. If I could just stop feeling bad. Yeah. If I could just move out of the, the gunk and, and see the, the sun rays shining through that are already shining through. I'm just not, I'm literally not seeing them. Not literally. I am actually purposefully, intentionally not looking at them because I don't want to be lulled into a state of complacency when everything just kind of takes me by surprise and everything sucks. Mm, I hope okay. I'm making so that, sense to the listeners. <laughs> I'm just word vomiting right now. Because basically yeah. what I just heard is the reason why I can't allow myself to take in how good and safe my life is now is because I have a belief that if I do that, then I'm going to become complacent. A which little, is yeah. The, which is the resistance that's causing your anxious part to not take in the reality. That sounds of, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, because I was going to, my next question was going to be like, well, where do you think the disconnect is? Because clearly like, you know that you're safe and your life is good and things are going well, but your anxiety has like no idea. It's living in this other world where everything's going to be bad or fall apart at any second. And I was going to ask you, where's the disconnect or why can't it see that? But now we know (laughs) it's this other Mm -hmm. story, the resistance of if I allow myself to, you know, relax or see that everything's good and know that I'm safe and not overwork, then that's going to lead to me being complacent. Yeah. And I think for me, and and I think this is pretty common with a lot of people, hopefully, (laughs) that if you kind of... It almost feels better in a sick way to worry and be anxious than it does to trust and allow. Like that feels better because why does it feel I know exactly why. And this is why it's so insidious, right? It gets you every time. It it's it feels better because it's what we're used to. For some of us, it's what we're used to. It's definitely what I grew up being used to is not is the the lack of foundation the lack of safety the always like looking to see how you can make yourself more safe and and it's never enough never safe enough never safe enough never stable enough never stable enough 
And that's the record that keeps playing is just, nope, you're never, they're never going to get to a point where you, where you will be safe enough or feel safe enough to relax. But it's still the carrot on the stick for me. I do it every single day. If I can just go to the end of my workday, getting this and this and this and this and this done, then I give myself permission to chill. And really, I'm not chilling. We've talked about this before. All I'm doing is like zoning out (laughs) until I have to come back to worry and stress again. Uh, but, and to be clear, it's not always like this, this is a moment. This is a season. This isn't it's a how theme, but it's not anyone like is permanently. Yeah. But for those of us who've, who've had, you know, conditioning, uh, whatever that looks like for you, where you tend to have this as your default setting or your automatic go-to when you feel stressed or, ang- or anxious, it, it's a pretty common one. And it can be triggered by anything. It can be triggered by anything. And It is very insidious. It gets into the deepest nooks and crannies of you and shows up when you least expect it. And all you can ask of yourself, I'm speaking to me and you listeners at right now, all you can do for yourself is just acknowledge it and acknowledge it, notice it, communicate with it if you can, which is what we're doing now and uh, move through it and it will get easier. It's... (sighs) It wasn't even a possibility for me back in the day, like in the past, never would have thought about this moment here where I would have accomplished all that I've accomplished and have have, literally created my life from the ground up. This would have never been a possibility. And it's still hard. (laughs) And it's still hard sometimes, but it doesn't have to be hard all the time. And even the hard stuff doesn't have to be debilitating and it doesn't have to be paralyzing. Still learning that. (laughs) <laughs> aren't we all <laughs> I was just on mute because I was typing um some stuff that was coming to me as you were talking um yeah I'm looking at it right now so the first thing that I think naturally as your friend slash coach in this moment is how can we dismantle some of these stories that are hurting you the story of if I stop it's going to be bad. And the story of if I even look at how good and safe things are, then I'm going to become complacent. I don't know. Well, (laughs) just, you know. Well, I would just start by asking the question, like, can you know for absolute certain that if you take in how good things are and you go easier on yourself that you will become complacent? No. Yeah. You can't really know that because you probably never actually tried. <laughs> or maybe if you tried, you were I just never have able the, to. I have the illusion of trying because I'm too <laughs> too scared to actually right? try. So if you've never actually experienced that, then you can't know for sure that that's the trajectory, right? But even if you had experienced that before, you still wouldn't be able to know that it's for certain the trajectory because right. just because something's happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to keep happening. Yeah. It's impossible for the same thing to happen exactly twice. Right. So I think we can start to at least get rid of some of the strength of the belief by taking in the truth that, okay, it's probably not for certain guaranteed that I will become complacent, which then gives you a little bit of light and a little bit of openness to adopt a belief that sounds something like, well, maybe... I'm open to trying it and seeing what happens. Mm-hmm. Like if it wasn't going to be complacency, I think, I'm curious to see like what might actually happen because I've never well, experienced that before. And maybe it would be something good. And I think that that's the hardest piece for me and maybe the listeners can relate is that I don't know what that looks like. like what does that look like? I can distract myself and do something fun, but that doesn't change my thoughts right before I fall asleep. You know, because I can. Because here's the thing: you don't know until you try. Oh, I've done that, girl. I've done that. I'm well, so good at doing you've that. Tried, but we need we need to keep trying new ways because you don't like you don't know how good your life could be on the other side of these stories until you allow yourself to drop them temporarily. You can pick them back up later, you know. But if you can set them <laughs> aside, the which you won't want to, but if you can set them aside for long enough to live in the unknown and like know that that's going to be uncomfortable and just like deal with that uncomfortability. Then on the other side, you might be like, 
damn, this was here all along and my anxiety was tricking me into thinking it was going to be bad and actually it's so much better. You know? I do. <laughs> so what do I do? <laughs> well, I think the question you have to ask yourself, because earlier you were talking about like, this is what I know and this is what I'm used to which let's all just have deep reverence and respect for that because it's hard to break these We all have those things. And we all have those things that we're kind of, for lack of a better word, stuck in just because they're so familiar to us. But it's like, are you willing to get dirty in the unfamiliar to risk your own success? Not risk your own success in the sense that you would lose your success, but risk being successful, like really successful, like even more than you have been before. Are you talking to me or the, what do you, yes, no, I'm, I'm talking in general, but I'm talking oh. to you. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess not. As, as if I, <laughs> well, I think if I you was. just didn't notice that you've yeah. been kind of like resisting the uncomfortability of the unknown. Because yes. I feel like that's really the stuck point. Like, But this is what we talk want... about. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say you want to live this other life, but the only way you can do it is going to be really uncomfortable because it's going to be not what you know and not what you're used to. You know? Yeah. And I think that this, that's the thing that we talk about all the time is what I'm doing and what a lot of us do is live the pain in a dull way over a long stretch of time classic right classic versus confronting it acknowledging it and, and listen I've confronted it before it doesn't mean it's not going to show up again this is one of the biggest misconceptions with healing in general is it not it is not linear by any stretch okay you heal you do the work you do the massive deep hard disgusting beautiful work of healing and guess what? It's going to show up probably again. It might look different. It might be a little, it might be another spot. It might be a, a different angle, challenge. next level, but it's, it's likely going to show up. And so I forget that all the time. I'm just like, dang, that was so hard. Now I got to do it again. Dang. But then I remember we came here to experience it all. If I wanted to just live absent from anything negative, why would I be on earth? Like, why would anyone choose to be here if they wanted anything less than everything? Right. That's a good one. Quotable. I know, right? Ooh, thank you, universe. <laughs> that one just flo flowed right out of my mouth. <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, I think it's just a, it's going to come up again. I, I, I'm still under this fallacy that there's going to be a point in my life where I don't have to worry. <laughs> Well, I mean, there, oh, might, be, there might be a point where you're a really a less worried person. Where a less, yes, that worried. that I, seems more realistic. But worries, concerns, stress, fears are always going to be there. Um, but so is the beauty. And why do we worry? Because we care. We worry because we are horrible. No, I'm just kidding. No. We worry because <laughs> we, we worry yeah. because we care. We the care. reason why you're so worried and the reason why you have so much anxiety is because you really want your life to be the freaking best, which is beautiful. You care so much about your well-being. You care so much about your future. You care so much about safety and your family's safety that you are literally losing sleep over it. See, but, but exactly. your positive but this intention is where... behind that, it needs some positive recognition of like you are a beautiful person for caring and the caring and the way that you're caring is outdated and no longer serving you because every coping right. mechanism has its expiration date. Hey there, we hope you're enjoying this episode so far, but if you want to listen to the whole thing, we're going to invite you over to our podcast, either search for High Vibe in It on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you guys listen to podcasts, or even better, if you want to watch the extended video version of this episode that's even longer than the actual podcast itself, head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash high vibe. Lindsay, tell them what's awesome about the Patreon. 
Patreon is where we have all of our extended episodes. As Kelsey said, we have it on video. So you can actually see the things that we're talking about. Sometimes we have visual visual aids and it's nice to know what we're talking about. We also have hangouts that we do sometimes that are exclusive to Patreon people. Um, and you can get started with all of this and bonus content and everything that we have only for the Patreon people for as little as $3, I think it's $3.33 a month. And that's it. And you guys can get all the benefits and all access to everything that we put in there. Really yeah. cool. It's really cool, really fun, super easy to join. And you guys don't even have to do that to finish this episode. If you're like, screw it, I don't want to pay any money. I just want to hear the rest of this episode. Go to our podcast, High Vibe in It. Search for it wherever you listen. It's totally free. Um, either way, enjoy the rest of the show wherever you choose to enjoy it. And we will see you guys next week because we do a new one every week. Adios. Bye. Bye.